How's it going guys? Eddie here, Cornhole Bag Reviews, coming at you with vlog number five. Today is Friday. We're actually gonna be running out to um, Junction Bowl in Isani, Minnesota for the Friday night Switch Holio Blind Draw. Special event tonight, uh, Pete, who's um, the gentleman that puts this event on, he's been putting it on for a couple of years now. He's stepping down as the person running this event. So we're kind of running like a going away party kind of thing for him and um, just, you know, having a fun time with his last night running the event. There's going to be a good amount of people there. It's a fun little venue indoors with like four sets of boards and just a really homey kind of venue. Should be a fun thing to do. Won't be doing the stream and whatnot tonight, but just going out there to play and have a good time and hang out with a lot of the people, you know, get some food and drinks and just play a good amount of games. Uh, one other thing I wanted to do in this intro. So you guys know that I've been into this Gladiator glove. So I'd like to announce that I'm um, actually working with Gladiator now which is awesome because the reason I love this glove so much, so I have a condition called hyperhidrosis, which means my hands and my feet just like sweat uncontrollably all the time, no matter the temperature or whatever. So this glove gives me this next level feeling of confidence where like, I don't feel like I'm just getting these bags all wet. Um, really it makes every bag feel the same regardless of conditions. Cause if it's really cold and my hands get really cold, you could definitely feel the difference. So it just brings this level of consistency, this sweat proof material on the palm just really keeps everything constant. You know, it took me about an hour to get used to, but since getting used to it, it's really made a huge difference in my game. And just the pure confidence level, which you guys know I talk about all the time between bag selection and how you're playing it. It's all about confidence, whatever makes you the most confident. And these really do that for me. So I got an affiliate link down in the description below. If you uh, use that link and then buy anything off of Gladiator's website, you help support the channel. But also, if you use code EDDIE10 on their website, you get 10% off a little bit for you guys. If you're thinking about something, maybe your hands are a little tacky, a little sweaty, and you want to try them out, it's a great thing to try out. Not too expensive. I think with the 10% off, they're like 18 bucks or something. Really worth it. I really enjoy it a lot, um, but definitely uh, worth trying out if you are in the same position. So. We're going to drive out to Junction Bowl and I'll catch up with you guys when I get out there. There'll be a good amount of people, hopefully, and, uh, you know, we'll get into another tournament vlog. So, you know, thanks for stopping by for another one and I'll catch you guys when I get out to the venue. All right, we are at Junction Bowl in Isani. So they don't do knockout here or any of those pre-game things, but we'll do the, you know, four rounds of Switcholio into the double elimination bracket. Um, I got a ton of bags here to try out. There's gonna be a ton of people here. Hopefully it's a uh, really good night, but uh, since we haven't been here before, I'll definitely show you guys around. Um, we, it's a bowling alley and then there's a sweet back room that they have four boards set up where they have um, horseshoe pits and stuff inside as well. It's a great winter spot. A little chilly in there because there's no heat or AC. It's just a kind of a sealed warehousey room. But um, so the boards probably be playing quick with how cold it is. It is like eight degrees outside today. So uh, for all you non Midwestern people, uh, yeah, it's really cold. <laughs> but uh, we'll get in there. We'll get a little bit of warm up. Got like 20, 30 minutes of warm up time. And then uh, we'll probably get into the switch holio. And then, you know, hopefully we can play better than we did last vlog because last vlog I did not play well at all. But Hopefully we shake that one off and have a good night here tonight. Either way, tons of people will be here. People I haven't seen in a little bit will be really fun, but uh, I'll show you guys around a little bit and I'll catch in with you guys once we start the event. Start off game one of pools down six to zero as Bruce down there at a four bag to my partner six. But Chris starts off with his first bag in the hole and I throw mine right off the back. Chris just skips a little bit past the hole, giving me a back bumper. I decide to lay a short block, which then he hit, then jams into. I try to go for a cut push. I hit the push in, but my bag slides off the back. Now with Chris going off the left side here, he only has a five point round. I really don't have any hole to work with. So talk to my partner, we just decided to lay up give up the one point, so we're down seven to zero to start the game. In my third round of shooting, we're now down 12 to zero. Chris has first bag and he's able to put it in. They're throwing surefires, I'm, we're throwing black waters. I'm able to follow. He then slides in again. I go for the short block here. He switches the fast side and has a nice little push through. 
I go for the block again, and he just tries to lay behind missing to the right, which gives me a nice push opportunity. And somehow I'm able to cut around my own bag without knocking it in uh, for the 10 10 wash. So still 12 to 0. The next round, we're now down 13 to 0. Chris has first bag. It finally shows me a little bit of room, missing one off the left. I'm able to slide in, taking a three point lead after the first bag. He's able to make his next one. It took an extra second to fall, so I just reset. And then I was able to follow it in. Still up three. He misses his off the back. So big opportunity here, but I do miss it off to the left. He's able to finish up for the six points. And I can go in to get four points, which I do for the 10 to six round. So we make the game 13 to four. Bruce continues his reign of terror down to that end, getting three more points. The score is 16 to four. Chris having first bag. He's able to slide in nicely with the surefires. And I'm able to follow. He throws his next one as a block, and I go to push through. I push and replace nicely, and then he goes to block behind, actually. I go for a little bit of left or right cut, and I'm missing it to the right, kind of jamming up behind. So Chris is going for the block behind up three points here. I could go for the airmail, but I decide to stick with the more conservative route and go for the hard push on the left side, just knocking my one bag in, which I'm able to do for the 8-8 wash, so still 16-4. to four. The very next round, Bruce proves that he's actually human. Missing his first bag off the back of the board in what seems like forever. And my partner, Jeremy, is able to lay a really nice block in front. A little bit of gap here, but Bruce pulls it to the left and knocks Jeremy in. That bag possibly out of play, but it has to get bumped up a good amount. Jeremy kind of bumps it up a little, but blocks up the lane nicely, forcing Bruce to go through. Throws a really nice push-through shot. Jeremy's then able to slide in, but that bag gets pulled ever so closer, so... Bruce could push through here to get three bags in. He knocks it in, but one hangs on. I just tell Jeremy if he lays on, we get the three points from the missed bag, which he lays on very nicely. So he gets a 10-7 to 7 round for three points to make it 16-7. to 7. After I get one point, it's 16-8, to 8, my partner with first bag. He throws a really nice blocker here. Bruce has been throwing well all game and pushes right through very easily. My partner then throws again and misses just a tad off to the left. So Bruce is lined up for two points here if he can continue in. He slides in nicely again. My partner is able to catch the edge and fall in. Bruce just machine right up the middle, center of the hole every time. My partner barely misses off the left, but the bag's kind of hanging on the hole, and Bruce is able to sneak in for the four bag. To get four more points, make it 20 to 8. The very next round, I give up a single point, so we lose the game 21 to 8. All right, so I'm going to do the recap in this echoey chamber that's freezing cold because it's even colder outside. But uh, game one just got done. Uh, we played against Bruce and Chris. Both were shooting really well. Chris, uh, Bruce on the other side was just killing it. Um, he didn't really miss that much. So I think I gave up, I don't know, like two or three points. Uh, we lost 21 to eight, I think. But uh, I mean, I was shooting fine. There's a lot of messy rounds. Um, the boards are so crazy fast and I don't really have any bags that are slow enough. So I'm throwing black waters, but I can't throw as aggressively. I really like being able to follow through hard at the hole and I kind of have to loft it a little bit. So just an adjustment period, which is fine. It's, you know, pool play, but there's gonna be a lot of really good teams. So it's kind of, it's kind of dependent on which partners you get in pool play. I could easily get bottom of the bottom of the standings just because of partners that you get and how the games go. But whatever, 0-1, um, eight points so far, we'll get, get back in game two and then, uh, I don't know, try to make a run. A couple rounds into game two, we're down zero to two. They have first bag throwing butters. We're throwing surefires, but his surefires are kind of brand new, super stiff, not necessarily hole friendly, which will kind of tide the game the way that it's going. But he's able to put one in here to go up four to two on the round. She follows him in. He then misses off the back, so now down five to four after three bags. She finishes in and actually drags back one of the butters with her, finishing up with a 10. He's unable to finish, so it's a 10 to five round. We give up five more, so we're down seven to zero. I'm able to get one point in the last round, so now we're down seven to one, and my partner has first bag. He starts with it off to the right, just a tad, and she's able to put it close to the hole. He misses off to the left, but knocks her in. But then she actually goes off the side, giving him one back. DJ is unable to capitalize, kind of following off the side, so still down. Three to two in the round. She's able to go in for to go up six to two. He goes on the board for three, and she can finish up here for the nine to three round for six points, so we're down 13 to one. 
After I give up two points in a 12 to 10 round, it's 15 to one. They have first bag. She lays a really nice block. BJ goes for the step out, get around here, but pulls it a little left and ends up going off the back. She throws another one up the middle, but those bags are still pretty far away from the hole. BJ throws a really nice block behind, now only down one in the round. She blocks behind again. BJ follows her on the board as well. And now the airmail fight comes in. She goes for it and misses. BJ goes for his and hits a really nice backside airmail to get the five to three round, hopefully turning the momentum a little bit. We're down 15 to three now. In the very next round, it's my turn to give up a big one. I missed the first bag a little bit past the hole, not coming back. He's able to slide in. Missed the second one just right at the hole, just building him a little bit of a wall to get through. He puts that one in. I missed the third one to the left of the hole in case I couldn't make the canal any easier. He puts it in. I'm able to finish up, but if he goes in the hole, I give up six to lose, which is what happens. A 12 to six round, giving up the six, so we lose 21 to three. All right, game two. <laughs> there, yeah, awful. <laughs> well, that was a case of, uh, so bag, I mean, this is why broken in bags are good. So I saw the guy I was getting paired with walking off from his last game and he was holding surefires. He's like, what do you want to throw? I was like, we can just throw those, that's fine. Well, it turns out his surefires weren't yet broken in, so they were like bricks. So not hole friendly <laughs> whatsoever. And really weird to hold a hand, just really solid, like just not broken in yet. And if you don't throw a broken in bag, you don't get a lot of the benefits of a broken in bag. So, and our opponent shot good, and we didn't shoot good. So, those two combos you lose, right? So we lost twenty-one to I don't know four, five. Shooting wonderful. Pool play though. So uh, whatever, we're zero two in pool play. We'll be in the bottom of the standings, and we get a partner, and then we'll do in the bracket. So whatever, I'll try to get some good points here in the next couple of games. See how it goes, get myself up from the bottom to the middle, hopefully, and get a solid partner. But um, I'm in the bottom. I'm not saying Peggy, I promise. The games just haven't gone our way. Our opponents have shot really good, and my partners haven't shot the greatest. So uh, we'll catch back in after uh, game three. In game three, my partner starts off the game with a four. So we're four to zero. I have first bag. I'm able to put the first one in the hole. He misses his just off the hole a little bit past, but then I kind of give it back by throwing it right off the board. I'm throwing 357s, they're pretty fast. His bag kind of hangs on the hole. I push through and go in with it. He misses his next one off the back and I'm able to finish up for nine points and his slides next to the hole. So we end up getting a nine to five round with four more points, we're up eight to zero. This game is nothing but big rounds so far and it doesn't change in the third round where my partner starts off with a nice blocker in front of the hole. A little bit on his side though, so his opponent's actually able to throw a really nice get around here. My partner goes to try to push through. He misses off the back left. Now down three to one through two bags. His partner tries to block behind, misses a little bit off to the right, giving a push opportunity here. But Jason pushes into his bag, knocks his in, but his one was no longer collectible. His opponent's able to go in and then Jason misses to the right for a second time. So now his opponent is able to go in for the 10 to five round, giving up five points. So now we're only up eight to five. I give up a 12 to 10 for two, so it's now eight to seven. They have first bag. He throws a nice blocker. My partner, Jason, slides one off the back, so down one to zero after the first bag. Second bag here, kind of goes to the push, lays another decent block. Jason's able to push through nicely, so it's only four to three after two bags. A third block comes in. Jason goes to the push through again, kind of jams into it a little bit, giving the opportunity here for a lane Owen oh, switches to fast side, goes to the big push, is only able to knock one of them in. But Jason pulls his last bag off the back. So it's an eight to four round. They get four more points. So we're now down 11 to eight. The theme of big rounds continues where the very next round, Steve starts with one nice up in the middle. I'm able to follow him in. He then throws his next one as a block and I go to block behind nicely. He pushes into the pile, knocking his in. I actually go fast side here and try to jam the whole pile through. And I hit everything except for his bag in. And he's actually a nice push through for a back-to-back four bagger. And my last one actually comes up short, hanging on the hole. So I give up a 12 to eight for another four points. So now we're down 15 to eight. The very next round, they have first bag. And he starts with one in the hole. My partner Jason misses it a little bit off to the right and a little bit deep. Owen gives it back by actually missing his left and deep, but Jason's unable to capitalize missing it left of the hole. So it's still four to two after two bags. 
Owen then throws a nice blocker bag. Jason goes to push through it, pushing it a little right, actually knocking his bag off the back. So if Owen pushes through here, then they're guaranteed at least six points to take the game. Owen hits a really nice push shot. So then Jason goes for the fun airmail and hits it, but it's a 10 to four round, giving up six points. So we lose 21 to eight. All right, so uh, game three is done. So uh, I played with one of the best players here, $5, but uh, um, you know, I shot fine. He gave up uh, like a five, a five and a six, I think. Uh, I'll have the rounds in there and stuff, but um, just not our game. You know, it's not my day. I can't win with any of the good partners here. I shot pretty well. My dude was like four bagging like crazy. I had a bunch of tens, nines. Uh, just giving up small little points here. I think I gave up four points in the game or something. But uh, whatever. So we lost 21 to eight there. So I'm definitely going to be in the bottom now. Oh, three. So the last game is actually about just getting, I don't know. It's kind of just practice now for a bracket to make sure that I'm on. I feel like I'm throwing well, so I'm not too worried about it. But it's just a fun time. You know, it's uh, Pete, the guy who runs it. It's his last day here. Or not last day here, but last day running it. So, you know, there's a lot of people. There's some food and treats, and it's, it's, it's a good time. So, um Cheer on for Luke. Luke's 3-0 going into the last game, so he might get first seed. Uh, he always throws really well out here. Boards are crazy fast. But uh, we'll get catch in after game four, and then we'll go into bracket. We'll go over the standings and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, so not the best start. But, again, it's pool play. It's score oleo, so like, or switch oleo. So I'll get a partner, and I'll just turn it on in bracket, just kick it into high gear. It's about time I win one of these. So catch in with you guys after round four. In the first round of game four, my partner starts with the first one off the side of the board. We're throwing my Costellos this game. D throws a really nice block. They're throwing the gray surefires. My partner blocks behind nicely. D goes for the aggressive shot, misses off the back. So we're tied one to one on the round. My partner goes for just a normal on the board. The D follows her. My partner finishes up behind and D goes up for the aggressive airmail. Land short on her bag and pulls them both in for the 7-3 round. To start off the game, we're down 4-0. to zero. In the very next round, my opponent starts off by sliding one in nicely. Uh, throwing these Costellos, the boards are really fast, so it's kind of in the hole or nothing for me. It's hard to lay blocks with these things unless I throw it really high, but I follow in. He's able to make his next one, and I'm able to follow in again. Now here on the third one, he throws it a little bit off to the right and falls off the side of the board and I'm able to quickly capitalize in getting in, putting me up three points after three bags. Now he can go in here to limit me to a possible three, but he actually misses again off the back, so I have a good chance to get six points on the round. Push it just a tad to the left, but still 10 to six, and I get the four points back, now tied four to four. In the very next round, my partner starts off sliding one in nicely to the hole. That's the perk of the Costellos when you're throwing with someone, is they really are friendly even if you're not flat. She makes the next one as well, up 6-1 to one on the round, now 6-2 to two after D pushes off to the side. After he gets the third one in, D goes aggressive and actually drills the airmail drag. Second round in a row with a big airmail. My partner misses off to the left and D's able to finish for the 10-10 wash. And a really nice comeback on the round on, after being down 9-2 to two after three bags. So the score is still 4-4. Four to four. A couple rounds later, we're now up 10-4. to four. I have first bag when I miss it a little bit deep off the back of the hole. That just shows the bags being a little bit too quick. I'm not able to throw as aggressive. I'm, my misses are a little bit deep, but Scott's able to put it in to punish me. I can follow him in now. So four to three with him, a bag left. He puts it in, so he's up six to four on the round. I push the next one a little bit right, giving him just tons of bumpers. Luckily, he misses it slightly off to the left, but I follow him left, unable to finish. Taking his bag off the back, so I only have five points on the round. He can go in to get four back which is what he does. So I give up four points there in a uh, nine to five. And so the score is now 10 to eight. A couple rounds later, we're up 15 to nine. I have first bag and I'm able to slide in. Scott is able to follow me in on the first bag. My second bag, I'm also able to go right up the middle. And uh, Scott follows me in again. My third bag, I do the third bag right near the hole kind of hanging in, and he goes for the block instead of pushing me in. I no hesitation to go for the airmail drag and hit it. And Scott uh, flips over to fast side, takes a step out to go for the big push, and is able to hit the nice two-bag push for a four-bag wash. So the score is still 15 to 9. After my partner gives up two, it's now 15 to 11. They have first bag. He misses it off the back, giving me an opportunity to score here, which I can capitalize on by sliding up the middle. His second bag, he's able to put in and I'm able to follow him again. Again, the Costellos are quick, but if you get him close, they were falling in really nicely. His third bag kicks to the right. 
I'm able to go around it and sneak in again. He actually blocks up on the hole here, so I take a second to think through my shot. I'm up nine to five currently on the round, so I have my four points. If I lay on, I get five, so it'll put us at 20, or I can go for the aggressive airmail to try to win. Uh, the hole was a little bit covered up by his bag, so I decided on the safe route by laying up in between the bags for the 10 to five round, giving us five points, putting us up 20 to 11. A couple rounds later, my partner was able to get the one point. So we win that game 22 to 12. All right, so game four done. Uh, we won 23 to um, like eight or 11, something like that. But whatever, got a win on the board. Didn't move us up the standings too much. I think moved us into 21st or 22nd out of 26, which is fine. I matched up with Bruce, who's uh, one of my buddies here. Uh, pretty good player. So probably be throwing surefires. We threw Costello's that last game. Man, are they fast. Uh, I was like a um, couple of good rounds, but I just feel like I couldn't. I just really want to be aggressive. I was throwing it so high because it's just like I'm trying not to slide off the back. Um, but whatever. Choked some four baggers here and there. Game went fine. But bracket's all that matters now. Um, obviously, we don't get a buy, so there's like two teams that get a buy, uh, but we're playing the first round. So hopefully we can run it through winners. Bruce will be a good partner. He gets really hot. He's either off or he's on. But if he's on, we have a really good shot to win. Uh, but we'll try to have some fun and uh, run it through bracket. If not, I'll be here playing like normal. And it's just fun to get up for another night to play. But uh, let's try to make a run and get a podium this time. So we'll catch you after the first round of bracket. So before we start bracket, we do bomb box. How they do it here is everyone buys in and then people will shoot the bags until all the bags have been made or all four of the bags have been made. So the first person gets to start out with four bags if they make one. Then the next person that gets pulled gets three bags, or if they make two, then you only get two bags, etc. Until some, all four of the bags have been made and the money's paid out. So the first one up here is Mike. He missed his first bag, but here is his second bag. He then went on to miss his uh, last two bags here. So the next person to get pulled will get three bags at the box. The next person pulled is Hugh, so he has his three bags, and here's his first one. He then missed his next two bags, so the next person drawn will get two bags to shoot at the box. Next up is Ron with two bags, throwing his White Widows. His first bag is way too much juice off the back, but here's his second bag. After a ton of people miss with their single bag, we're back to Ron again with one bag left at the box. In the first round of game one of winners, my partner scored a points. So we're up one to zero and I have first bag. I throw first one in the hole and he actually misses his off the side. So I have an open opportunity here and I give it right back by throwing it off the back. He throws his next bag as a nice blocker. I no hesitation go for the right to left cut and hit a really nice cut around his bag. Up six to one after two bags. He has a really nice push to clean up his bag. I'm able to finish up for the nine. He can go in to wash out the round, but misses to the left, giving us two points. So we're up three to zero to start the game. After my partner got a nice four points last round, we're up seven to zero when I start with the first bag in. Ron is able to follow me. They're throwing the Minnesota tailgate beta as a newer bag from them. We're throwing the surefires, but I make my second one as well. He goes a little short. I immediately go for the cut that I did the first round. I hit a nice cut, kind of hangs on the back of the hole just a tad. It is collectible though. He pushes off the back and I ask him, do you want me to just slide in or do you want me to go for the airmail? He calls for me to go up. So I go up and try to go for the airmail drag and I hit the nice airmail drag to finish off the four bagger. His last bag here to limit it to five in the round, he misses off the back again. So it's a 12 to four round getting us eight points. So we're up 15 to zero. A couple rounds later, we're up 15 to four. They have first bag and he starts off with a slide one right up the middle. My partner Bruce, throwing the yellow surefire, is able to follow him in. Hugh then misses one a little bit right, giving Bruce a bumper, somewhat, a little bit deep, but he pushes it a little bit right, but it is a good blocker. Hugh gives it back by missing off the side, kind of pushing Bruce's a little closer. Bruce goes out for it, but misses a little right off the side and kind of gives it back, and Hugh gives him a little bit of a thank you for it, but Hugh then goes to try to push through with the beta here. Pushes up into the surefire, getting it closer to the hole, and Bruce, no hesitation, goes to the airmail drag and hits a really nice airmail drag for the 9-5 to round, getting us four more points, making the score 19-4. to 
I'm able to get the two points we need in the next round, so we take the first game 21 to four. All right, game one of bracket. We won 21 to one, two, something like that. We played really well, played against Ron and Hugh. Um, they weren't throwing the best. We were throwing pretty decent. I hit a really nice airmail drag, get an eight point round, which kind of like took all the momentum. And then uh, we just able to capitalize on that one and finish the game off. So not too bad of a game. Most, we're still in winners, but you know, there was teams with buy. So we'll play a team with a buy now and then uh, see if we can keep winning. So we're throwing surefires. Uh, they're a little quick still, but um, you know, we don't have anything slower. So surefires it is. So we'll see how it goes in game two. Catch it in soon. In my first round of game two, we're down three to zero. Opponent has first bag, and Christmas is the first one off the back. I'm able to punish it by making one in the hole, three after one bag. He puts in his second one, I'm able to follow. He goes for a nice little block, and I'm actually able to throw a little cut into the right side and sneak in. He goes trying to push through and knocks one of his in, but stays short. I go kind of aggressive for the cut shot again, but miss it off the back. Kind of squandering an opportunity there to get three, but I get the nine to seven round to get two points back, so we're down three to two. A couple rounds later, we're now down seven to four. Chris has first bag, lays a really nice block. I go to try to just block behind, miss to the right, and you can see how fast the boards are. I'm gonna slid off. He blocks behind again, but pushing his a little closer. I go to block closer. He goes up for the air mill, lands on my bag, Knocks one of his in and knocks my back bag off. So it's five to one going into the third bag. I try to hit the air mail to negate damage. Barely miss the air mail and he lands short again, pushing another one in. So the board right now is laying eight to one. I look at Bruce and I'm like, what should I do? I'm thinking I need to shoot it to try to negate damage. Because even if I miss it's, or get on the board, it's only six. I hit the side of the hole again. So two air mails lip out. So I give up an eight to one round, giving up seven points. So now down 14 to four. After my partner gives up two, we're down 16 to four. Chris has first bag, lays another nice blocker. I go to, I push his in and kind of replace it with the block of my own. He goes to the left a little bit, even with my bag. I step out to try to go for a cut push here. I hit the bag nicely hitting him, but my bag kind of deflects off to the back right, now not gettable. He gives me a freebie off the board, so I go for the cut shot around and throw a terrible cut shot, giving the board shot off the board right back to him. So still four to four going into the last bag. He throws a short blocker, and once again, I'm pretty confident in my cut shot, so I go for a big cut around the bags, and I'm able to sneak in the very corner of the hole all the way around his bags for the seven to five round to get back two points, so we're down 16 to six. Now down 18 to six, they have first bag. Lance has been shooting really well this game with a couple four baggers before this, and starts with his first bag right up the middle and in. Bruce just bounces a little short and kicks to the right, kind of out of play. Lance is able to make his second one in again to punish. Bruce's second one kicks right on him again, out of play. Lance making the third one makes it so Bruce has to finish. And Lance can get in here for the four bag to guarantee the win, which he does. So last bag doesn't matter for Bruce. Throws it up, leaves it short. But it's a 12-6 to six round, giving him six points. So we lose the game 24-6. to six. All right, so game two of bracket winner's bracket uh we lost 21 to 12 or 13 something like that um we should have fine the opponent shooting against my partner shot really good i don't think he missed more than like three or four times and then the guy i was shooting against i just i just missed some easy shots i hit i hit a couple hard cut shots and uh some other difficult shots but it's just missing the board or missing right i don't know missing right kind of on everything it doesn't feel like i'm following it's just hard for me when the I mean, this is why bag selection is so important. When the bag boards are this quick, like I just really like following through hard at the board, stepping over the over the end of the board. Right now, having to finish up a little bit because the bags are a little quick and uh, just is affecting my accuracy a little bit. I mean, no excuse, I should be able to adjust, but just missing a little bit off to the right, just not following through fully. Uh, we lost 21 to, yeah, 12, 13. But whatever, we'll go down a loser's bracket. I mean, we could definitely make a run. My partner is pretty solid. And uh, you know, either way, having a good time, seeing a lot of people. 26 people today, so really good turnout up in uh, the northern part of Minnesota for people to come up here and do this. So uh, we'll check in after game three, but uh, we're still having a good time. Uh, loser's bracket round two now or three or something, whatever we move down to after the winner's bracket, but I'll check in after that game. So I'll see you guys soon. In the first notable round of our loser's bracket game, we're up three to two. I have first bag and I'm able to throw the first one in. They're throwing Viper. She throws a short block. I actually had a really nice cut roll shot here around it with the Surefires to make my second bag. She's able to sneak in her second bag. I go once again for the cut. Even though I don't make it all the way in, it blocks up the hole nicely. 
She goes to block behind. I could go for the airmail, but her bag was kind of hanging in the hole, so I decided just to block behind, having the bag advantage. She goes for the airmail and hits both me and her bag in, so it ends up with a 10-7 round, so we get three points, and now we're up 6-2. to two. In the very next round, Bruce has first bag, starts out by sliding in pretty close to the hole, hanging on, but it's gettable here. She throws a really nice block behind. Bruce, no hesitation, goes for the airmail drag and hits a really nice airmail drag, his opponent being like, what the heck? But Bruce has been shooting his airmail really well. She slides off the back. Bruce once again just goes for the airmail again. Misses right on the edge of the hole. She pushes both in really nicely. And I tell him that both are going to go. So he probably should just push through. And he actually makes a choice that I didn't think that he would. And uh, turns out to help us a lot actually. But he decides just to throw the bag away. Force her to go push him in. She actually misses off the board and both the bags stay. So we happen to get a 6-2 to two round here. Getting four more points. So now we're up 10 to 2. Jumping forward a little bit, the score is now 11 to 6. We have first bag and I'm able to slide in. Boys are slowing up just a tad so I can throw the surefires a little bit harder. They're throwing vipers. She misses off to the right just a tad, but I'm able to punish by following in on the second bag. She misses off to the right again, kind of leaving the door open and giving me a bumper. I slide in the third bag. She misses the third one off the back. I can really punish here with a four bag. I'm able to make all four. She's able to make in the last one for five, but we get seven points on the round, so the score is now 18 to six. In the very next round, my partner's got first bag. He's able to stay consistent and slide the first one in. Our opponent actually goes off the left side of the board, opening up an opportunity here to win if he makes all his bags. Slides in the second one, she misses off the back. So now it's just about getting him on the board. He goes for the airmail for fun, hits the hole. She just goes on the board. He goes for the airmail again and misses off, but she has to push both these things in to tie. She misses off the side for one point. So we get a six to one round for five points. We win the game 23 to six. All right, game three of bracket, but first round of losers bracket that we played. We won 21 to four or five. Uh, threw better that game. We switched sides, so I went over the board and he went uh, outside. Uh, we shot good. Um, not too crazy hard of a matchup, but uh, just nice to get another win. So we'll move on to loser's bracket round three or four or something. I think we've got to win, I don't know, three or four more in a row, something like that. Uh, if we keep throwing the way we're throwing, we definitely have a chance. Uh, it's just about staying consistent, not making big mistakes, not giving up big rounds, and then taking big rounds when the opportunities show up. So uh, check in after the next round of loser's bracket. In the first interesting round of loser's bracket round two, we're down three to one when my partner Bruce starts out with his first one in the hole. His opponent is able to follow him in. Bruce throws his next one in as well. Starting to get more consistent. We had a shaky start to this game. So hopefully we dial it back into where we were at. Bag three is able to put in after his opponent missed his second bag. And after the miss of the third bag, he could go in here. To almost guarantee four. He goes a little short, but it kind of works as a blocker getting in the way, knocking his opponent's bag out of the way. So we get a 10 to six round to get four points. So now we're back up five to three. With the score now five to four, they have the first bag back and they start in with the first bag up the middle and in. Bruce comes in missing a little bit off to the left, possibly giving a bumper. He pushes, his opponent pushes up the block pretty nicely. Bruce goes for a push, misses a little short on the front board. Here's a really nice bag, pushes through, makes his bag and pushes Bruce's over the hole. So now forcing Bruce just to follow it in. Finishing up here, he has a bag short as a block, but Bruce almost has to make it to go in, so he goes up a little bit short on it. It's a 10-5 to round. They get five points back, so now we're down 9-5. to In the very next round, Pete's got the first bag. He starts by sliding the first one in nicely. I'm able to follow him in, going into the second bag. He's able to slide in his second one as well. I just stay consistent and up the middle. The boards are still playing pretty quick, so blockers are a little bit tougher. He misses his third one off the right, giving me an opportunity, which I'm able to capitalize on, making in my third bag, now up two in the round. He misses one short left, I instantly go for my right to left cut, hit a nice cut right around the bag for a 12-8 to eight round to get four points back, so now it's nine to nine. After about five rounds of us giving up one point at a time, we're down 15 to nine, they have first bag. Pete's able to slide in the first one, and I'm able to follow. On Pete's second bag, he misses off a little bit to the right, giving me a bumper. I don't even have to use it, I just slide right in, but now his bag's pretty much out of play. His third bag missed to the left, so this should be an easy bumper shot, and this was a big miss looking back at the video. I had a pretty easy line to use fast side there. He's able to sneak around. I finally flipped to fast side on the last bag, 
and slide in for the 10 to 8 for two points, but I easily should have had four there. But the score is now 15 to 11, trying to make the comeback. In the very next round, we get the big opening that we're looking for. My partner is able to slide in the first bag, and a very unusual mistake by his opponent missing one off the left. He's been very consistent the whole game. Bruce Lee is a nice blocker. The second shot just a little bit off to the side, but it prevents his opponent from being able to slide in and misses off to the right. Bruce then sneaks around his bag nicely, leaving the blocker in place and again preventing him from going through and he misses off the back of the board. Bruce gets pretty unlucky here having his bags hang up for the four bagger, but still he's laying eight to one on the round. His opponent just kind of has to go on the board and not touch his bags and actually knock them in. But because he's trying to land so short, he actually front boards here. So it's an eight to one round giving us seven points. So now we're up 18 to 15. After I'm able to get one point, it's now 19 to 15. My partner Bruce has first bag. Starts with a really nice blocker, a little bit on his side, giving some room to sneak around his opponent. His opponent steps out and actually hits a really nice bully bag. That bag's still collectible, but Bruce doesn't like stepping out too much. So he goes out for it. While he's able to push it in, the other bag's not gettable, but his opponent kind of gives this one back by missing it off the board. Bruce then slides up the middle nicely, and his opponent uses the bag that he left as a bumper again. But honestly, it helped Bruce here, using it as a bumper to finish up with the 10. His opponent has to go in to extend the match, but because he goes on the board, it's a 10 to 7 round. We get the three points that we need, so we win the game 22 to 15. All right, game two of losers. Uh, we were able to make a nice comeback win. So uh, throwing good, we were down, I don't know, 14, six at one point or something. Uh, we had a really nice comeback. Uh, still a lot of rounds to go. Good amount of people here losing the second game after not getting a bye. You go pretty early down in losers. So uh, we have to win at least three more to make the finals. So uh, just kind of keep running it up. The big key here is just not giving up big rounds. You know, people are missing the board a little bit here and there, you know, drinks are flying. So it's just, it's about not giving up those sixes, those sevens and just taking your ones and twos when you can. And just, uh, and then hoping for a big round and capitalizing when your opponent misses. So we won that one, good comeback win. And uh, we'll catch you guys after the next one. Going into game three of losers, I'm shooting against one of the best players here, $5. And I'm able to start out with my first one in the hole. We're both throwing surefires. He actually misses his first one off the back, really opening up an opportunity for me. I could stay consistent up the middle. He's able to follow me through on the second bag, but still up three on the round. I'm able to go in on the third bag. He actually misses short here and gives me a good opportunity to finish out. I pull it a little bit, but he still got a really tough shot over his short blocker bag. He throws a really nice last bag over the top for a 10 to seven round. So we get first blood going up three to zero in this game. The very next round, my partner Bruce got first bag. He misses his first one deep left a little bit, but his opponent gives it back to him with the front board. So now up one on the round, even with the miss. Bruce is able to go in nicely on the second bag, his opponent missing off a little bit to the right. Could possibly be used as a bumper here, which Bruce uses nicely. So up three points after a couple of bags. His opponent misses his next one left, giving Bruce a nice hole to finish in, which he's able to finish up for the 10. This is to limit it to five, but misses it short and right. So we're looking at a 10 to three round for seven points. So we start up 10 to zero. In the very next round, I just wanted to keep my foot on the gas pedal. So start off with the first one in the hole. And my opponent actually misses his first one off to the right that I can use as a bumper. So I actually don't need it as a bumper. I slide in the left side, kind of avoiding his bag, and he follows me in. But I'm still up two after the two bags. I'm able to slide in the third as well. And uh, $5 here misses off to the right. So here, another chance for me to finish up. This one, I actually am able to finish up the four bagger. He makes his last bag, but it's a 12 to 8 round. We get four more points, so we start up 14 to 0. Fast forward a couple of rounds, the score is now 17 to three. They have first bag, $5 starts with the first one in and I'm able to follow him. Second bag here, he puts off a little bit to the left. I go for a cut shot, missing a little bit to the left, but kind of jam up into his, which works out fine. He goes and blocks behind. I try to block behind, but actually missed to the right. And here $5 hits a pretty nice shot. He goes for a big push on fast side, pushes it in one of his bags, but the other one's hanging on the hole. So I step out here and go for a big push and try not to pull him in with fast side cutting in. I actually hit the push and the bags fall ridiculously slow. Both of them drip in for the 10-10 wash to keep the score at 17-3. Now with the score 17-4, I do the one thing I've been trying not to do the whole game. I've been holding Jason at bay really well, but I have a really bad round here. He starts with the first one in. I miss mine off the back left. He throws a nice block. I try to push through and miss that one off the left again. He hits a really nice two-bag push, now up 9-2. to two. 
I missed left again and knocked one of my bags off, so it's still 9-2 to two going into the last bag. He can put this in to force me to make it. He misses a little bit to the left, giving me a chance for the hole here to limit it to 5, but I jam up into him and nothing falls, so I give up a 10-3 to three round, giving up 7 points, making the game now 17-11. to 11. In the very next round, trying to keep the momentum from swinging towards them, but their opponent starts with the first bag nicely up in the hole. Bruce follows him well. Pretty consistent right in the middle of the hole. His opponent starts again, second bag, right up the middle and in. Bruce follows him in again as well. Now here, a sign of life for us. He misses it right off the back of the hole, giving Bruce a chance for two points if he finishes up. He finishes the third bag nicely and a little bit too hard for his opponent off the back. Now giving Bruce a big opportunity. If he makes it in, he gets the five we need, which he does. He finishes up the four bagger for a 12 to seven round, giving us five points. So we finish the game 22 to 11. All right, so game three of Loser's Bracket. Now we played against $5 and his partner, Kevin, I think. Uh, I'm not sure about the name, but you know he's one of the best players here. I was shooting against $5. I was just in the zone the first like five, six rounds. Uh, just, you know, putting in bag after bag, putting the pressure on. Took the early lead. We were up 17-3. We gave back. I gave up a seven-point round or something to make it 17-11, but then we were able to close it out from there to win 21-11. Um, you know, again, I mean, it's just it's just getting that pressure on you. We had the big lead, and I gave up a big round. I shouldn't have given up a big round, but we had a big enough lead to, you know, take advantage and win it. When you have that big lead, man, it's hard to keep the gas on. You know, you get nervous. You're like, all I need is four, you know, and they got nothing to lose, so they're just chucking it. So uh, just not just making sure you're staying with your game plan, staying up the middle. I was just no hesitation, just making uh, four baggers on them to, to get points early game. So got back on that train. We won that game. Um, loser semis now. So if we win the next one, we're guaranteed at least third. Uh, we're going to play the winner of a game going on right now. Um, after we win that one, we got to play against uh, Chris and um, Chris and uh, Lance, the team that we lost to in winner's bracket. So. Good rematch there if we can keep up. Uh, let's try to keep it up. We're playing, uh, should be coming up here in a second, and I'll catch you guys. Hopefully we win winner semis and make it to winner's finals, but I'll catch any of you guys after the next game. In the first round of Losers Game 4, my partner gave up a 3, so we start down 3-0 to zero, where my opponent starts with his first bag as a short right blocker. I'm able to jam into it and kind of take over middle control. He misses a tad to the right. I hit a really nice push for place here, keeping the block intact but getting one of my bags in, which makes him miss off the back. I'm able to clean it up with a push with him laying two. He's finishing up with the five, but I'm able to finish up the four bagger for a 12 to five round to get a seven points back to go up seven to three on the game. My partner is able to get four points as well. So we're up 11 to three when my first bag misses a little off to the right. It's uncollectible now and he could possibly use it as a bumper. He's throwing vipers, so even though that thing's hanging on the back, that could easily come back. And when I tap it, it starts moving, but I'm able to slide my second one in. He misses his second one off the board, but when I throw this one next to the hole, it jams it even closer. And vipers do what vipers do. He hits his bag, and both of them are able to fall in. I go for a push to try to collect mine and just throw a terrible bag back to the left. And he's able to finish up with a viper sneaking in on the last bag to get a 9-5 to five round to get four points back. So the score is 11-7. to seven. The plague of the big rounds hits us again when Owen, Mr. Consistent over there, starts with his first bag in the hole. He's been throwing really well this whole game with those Vipers. My partner starts with his first bag off the back, so down three after the first bag. Owen stays right up the middle, no doubt on that second bag. Bruce puts his right around the hole, possibly could be packed, pulled back with an airmail drag. Owen again, right up the middle, no doubt again. Bruce misses his third bag off the back, so now with Owen finishing up, it's a 12-1. to 1. So he decides to go for the airmail drag to limit damage. Hits the bag, but it's a 12-2, to 2, giving up 10 points. So now we're down 17-11. to 11. In the very next round, Jamie's got first bag. He throws his first one as a nice blocker. I go for a cut here and throw it a little bit too hard and slides off the back. His second one slides just past the hole as well. So again, I go for a cut. I'm actually able to cut this one in and around. His third bag jams up into his second bag, so I go to try to block behind, which I do well. He then thinks about going up for the airmail, so he decides to go up and actually hits one in and somehow hangs all the rest of the three of them on the hole. So I look at Bruce and just say, should I just give this to you? Because they got three fast side vibers sitting on the hole, and we can't give up that many more points. So I decide to just give it away, give up the two points here. Go down 19 to 11 because I think if I hit the board, the rest of those are going in. So it's 19-11 now. The very next round, 
the score 19-11. Owen starts with his first bag in, just consistent the entire game. Bruce back on the horse, really nice bag. And Owen actually gives one back here, going with the front board. So an opportunity for points to get us closer in this game. Bruce slides in the second one as well. Owen slides in his third bag to even up the score at six. Bruce finishes up nicely with his third bag. Owen actually misses off to the left with his third, so giving Bruce a big shot here makes the four bagger for the 12 to seven, giving us five points, making the game 19 to 16. After Jamie and I have a four bag wash, it's still 19 to 16. Bruce has got first bag, starts with a really nice bag up the middle. Owen with a nice answer with the Vipers. Here, Bruce misses just a tad to the right and it slides off the back. Now with an opportunity for Owen to finish up the game, he makes in the second bag going up three after two bags. Bruce misses off to the left. If Owen makes this, it's all but sealed. He makes the third bag, so Bruce goes for the last bag off the back, but game didn't matter. Owen goes to the airmail for fun, but they get the points that they need, so we lose the game 21 to 16. All righty, loser semis out again right before the podium. Fourth place, two vlogs in a row. Uh, this one, uh, my partner gave up a 10. We were up, I don't know, probably like 12 to 7, 11 to 7, something like that. We were, we had good momentum, feel like we were throwing good, and then uh, just one rough round, and all of a sudden it's 17 to 11. Grinded back a little bit to 14, I think, and then we ended up losing. You know, it's just one of those games that happens, um, you know, whatever. It was fun, you know, I mean, we made a good run in losers after losing really early. I felt like I threw really well. Um, you know, and it's a fun fun night to get out and play. A lot of really good people, you know, 26 people getting out on a Friday night when it's five degrees outside. Uh, gives us something to do. So really fun time. But, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys stopping by for another vlog. You know, these are, these are fun to make. Um, you know, get some people on the cameras, get some gameplay out there. And, and hopefully you guys are like enjoying it. Even though I'm not podium and I, I mean like, yes, I, I'm, I'm making YouTube videos, but I'm not like the world's greatest player. I'm not a pro. I'm just out here grinding like the rest of you guys, trying out bags and just trying to get better. So hopefully you guys can get better with me. Uh, hopefully you learn something from some of the strategy I talked through, even if I'm always not the best at executing the shots, but you know, appreciate you guys stopping by for the vlogs. You know, I really enjoy making these and uh, hope to get you more content in the future. I got a lot of cool stuff planned with some tournaments coming up. So I'll keep making these blind draw vlogs, but I, I got some big events hopefully in the future and uh, continue to do the podcast and other reviews and whatnot. So appreciate you guys stopping by for another vlog. I will catch you in the next review, podcast, video, comparison, whatever it is, vlog. But uh, hope you have a great rest of your week and we'll catch you in the next one.